the common the modality of governance My name is Gwendolyn Hallsmith. I work as the city planning director for Montpelier, Vermont, and I suppose I'm here because I've written a book called Creating Wealth. It's all about how local communities can grow their economies with complementary currencies. My, my name is Pat Conzi. I'm from the New Economics Foundation in London and a research fellow there. My name is Anne Stick. <coughs> I work with Flora, which is a network of expertise in Belgium, uh, connecting organizations that work with mainly women in poverty, and we do research with them as partners to understand better why they are so excluded from the dominant economic system, and we come up with alternative ideas and systems in which, of course, complementary currencies are a key element. My name is Indra Sankoyo. I come from Indonesia, of a school of democratic economics, which is a social learning infrastructure to uh, uh, endorse uh, um, the communities, the research institutions and the public sectors to engage in a social learning to reverse the uh, secular tendency of crisis deepening, social and ecological. So we, we, uh, we, uh, we develop the uh, different social ecological rationality for presumptions, energy and materials, and we, uh, uh, we, we see ourselves within the new Asian context of uh, accelerations of natural energy presumptions. And the second is the uh, development of social protocols for presumptions at the very local level. That's why it's, it's very, very key actually to, to understand the, uh, the tenets of the alternative uh, understandings about money. And the third is actually uh, we develop uh, all sorts of uh, learning management uh, as opposed to knowledge management uh, because we are so poor in understanding how to learn with uh, diverse uh, uh, understandings of the crisis. Great, so let me, let me ask a first question. Um, what motivated you to come here to the conference and talk about money in respect to the commons? What, what is the relation you have, your specific relation to that? How do you think money is related to the commons and why is that interesting to discuss for you? I think uh, we've been doing action research with women in poverty, mainly women in poverty, uh, for about 20 years. And one of the questions we asked them, what is, what is your understanding of work? What is work for you? And then we compare that to employers. What do you understand? You know, what does work mean for you? And we discovered that they have different definitions. And that women said, for us, productive work, getting an income that allows us to buy the things we need, etc., is one type of work. But care work is also important. And then work for a community is also important, contributing to community. And then also, you know, ourselves being feeling good, feeling well, etc. So this became like our frame of analysis, like if it goes wrong, it's probably because the economy only recognizes productive work and destroys the other types of work if needed. And so women don't enter the system because they have a defi different definition, but their definition is very interesting. So we discovered that systematically, each project we did, the reason why there is an imbalance between the productive work and the other types of work is because of the money mechanism because money grows exponentially or with interest or whatever. And so, because you cannot pay your debts back with virtual products, you have to pay them back with real production. So the productivity is increasing. So that's why we said if we ever want to re restore the gender balance and the, the gender definition of roles and have an equal valorization of all those roles that women find important, we have to get rid of this monopoly of this destructive money system and this is how we got into this this strand of reflection. Right, likewise, I'm interested in it because of the role that money plays in the destruction of all of the commons, both gendered work, the natural environment, our social environment, the positive interest function of money and its exponential growth is driving the growth imperative and forcing us to over exploit both human and natural worlds. And so if we want to protect the commons and want to have a robust, vital, and vibrant commons, we need to design new types of money and new types of exchange mechanisms to make sure that they'll be protected and, and actually enhanced and made more vital and vibrant through new forms of exchange and new ways of interacting with each other. 
Uh, yeah. Uh, um, the uh, the regions that uh, we work, uh, particularly the uh, Southeast Asia, uh, is now uh, under a very serious onslaughts um, in terms of the accelerations of uh, financial deepening. But it's it's, it's it's unprecedented, I think. So uh, to stretch a bit the, your logics on uh, uh, community logics, now uh, even the infrastructure for uh, life actually is being co-opted. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and just to give an example, uh, just uh, two months ago, actually, um, a consultant uh, calculated around $57.9 trillion uh, is now ready to, uh, you know, to flow into infrastructure expansions. And so local governments, uh, uh, communities will have no uh, particular uh, strength to say no to uh, infrastructure expansions that will destroy their life space. And, and and the the uh, money is really crucial in this, and and uh, government ceases to be uh, mm -hmm. critical, or if mm -hmm. there's ever uh, like that, um, and so we uh, uh, try to understand now the uh, different logics, the, the the tenets of of energetics for um, you know many diverse uh, commons in the 250 million uh, uh, people uh, region. Uh, my interest began in the 1980s when um, I was working in a legal centre in, in, in the centre of England in Birmingham. And we were seeing more and more people coming to the legal centre with debt problems. And it was just growing and growing and growing. And we had to set up a tourist and national unit to train and develop other debt centres in, in, in the UK. And then we had so much demand for our legal support and help with bankruptcy that we then had to develop a, a national telephone line, which is now a big thing called Debtline, which is across the United Kingdom. So it's very, it's, it, and it, the problem has just got worse since we developed these um, reformist ways of helping people av avoid committing suicide and, mm -hmm. and um, family abuse and, and, and destitution. And so I started working on alternative finance, really, in the early 1990s, developing community finance systems, loan funds, that actually work uh, in an ethical way in terms of how they invest and how they, how they make returns. But increasingly, it became clear to me that we have to move to a system that's not based on compound interest, that's actually based on fees, and to convince some of the cooperative organizations that do good ethical investment, they should consider um, you know, not using the uh, traditional compound interests, but a fee-based financing system. So that would it take us towards the, a commons. You know, there are a lot of these uh, social financing organizations that have uh, really grown all over the world in the last 25 years or so, since Muhammad Yunus and all that. Um, but they're not necessarily, they're not using these cooperative mechanisms of the past, and if they could adapt that, then of course they could be more effective than trying to copy the way that the banks um, provide financial services. Yeah, it always seems funny to me that to try to get people out of poverty, we put them in debt. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, Is that yeah. the best way to do it? I just don't think so. Right? In, in many islands in Indonesia, actually, now the, the younger generation starts to sell their horses, actually, and, and to buy motorcycles to bring uh, manganese ore from their own mm -hmm. uh, farms to the port so that it can be exported to China. So it's. Uh, money is not only uh, you know facilitating uh, the indebtedness, but also uh, actually it's kind of a, the mediation mechanisms actually to destroy the uh, life space, and so it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. And the whole politics turn into compensatory politics, so mm -hmm. land grab, water grab, and all that is now mm -hmm. piggybacking on actually mm -hmm. the flow of money. Yeah, the enclosure of the commons, the mm -hmm. increasing privatization of natural mm -hmm. resources, of social resources is all driven by the need of the money system to mm -hmm. make a profit at an increasing rate. It's not sufficient just to make a profit. You have to make a profit faster and faster, mm -hmm. more and more, to keep up with that exponentially growing compound interest money system. Mm -hmm. For me, another reason to come here was that you feel, we did some research on the, age, the problem of the aging population, and so all the work is, as long as work is identified with productive work, if you have an aging population, people that are not productive anymore mm. are seen as not working and therefore as a cost. Mm. 
-hmm. And so because of the aging population, politics, even European politics, are starting to understand that we're going into a wall somewhere because mm -hmm. our economic system does not recognize all the work that aging people do or can do, so they become a cost. But of course, the younger generation is not numerous enough to cover all these costs. So either we give these older people what they have a right to and we go bankrupt, or we say we'll just divide what we have and they will all live in poverty. Mm -hmm. So I feel a certain openness with research on that last year to say, well, if you redefine the notion of work to include all the commons work, all the work that you do caring for each other outside these markets, you might solve the problem. So I feel that there is a, a, a nagging of dread at politi a political level, mm -hmm. which might also create an openness to these alternative models. But therefore, I think all these commoners, which do fantastic work, each in their little corner, mm -hmm. we should also become more of a common and mm -hmm. connect our knowledge and our wisdom and our very mm -hmm. diverse wisdom and very horizontal wisdoms, but make that a, a, a clear and um, sufficiently important message to the politicians so that they can mm -hmm. support it. And this was one reason why I also mm -hmm. came here, hoping to connect with other commoners. <laughs> oh, well, on that subject of aging, in Montpelier, I got a million dollar grant from the federal government. You were saying they're more mm -hmm. open to these new solutions to create a time bank-like structure for elder care mm -hmm. so that people are mm -hmm. trading in time instead of money like in to get their elders taken mm -hmm. care of. And the, mm -hmm. you know the same system has existed in Japan for the last 18 years, the Furai Kipu mm -hmm. system, mm -hmm. where people can trade time in one city with another mm -hmm. city to make sure the elders are cared for. It's mm -hmm. not a monetary mm -hmm. exchange at all, and it's working great in both places. But what I think is really important is that we do not again make it into one specific pension fund problem that we will solve with complementary currencies, because mm -hmm. the, the complementary currency or the, the negative impact of you know, the, the bank money is not just on the quality of life of people, elderly people, etc., but on the quality of life of like every Everybody. being on earth. So mm. for us, the aging population is one case of a big challenge, mm. but the same lessons could be applied to the other challenges, poverty in the south, resource depletion, etc., mm. etc. Et and that's why it's important that we're here in Berlin to, to bring together these insights from different angles and look what are the the same driving mechanisms mm -hmm. underneath it all and how can we plan for a, a good infrastructure for us to be more efficient and effective and use the same, you know, not everybody having to invent their small little infrastructure in their own little corner, but to create networks and, and communication stuff so that we can have clear and efficient messages to the politicians mm -hmm. and not just all little beggars for some small subsidy but a clear mm -hmm. message. Right. Let me get back to that question of how do we create something um, from the point where we are standing now. Um, we have posed three questions this morning um, and I, I think you recall them. Um, the one issue was how could we demonetize uh, and why should we demonetize mm -hmm. in order to move towards the commons. Um, that was one aspect. Do you find yourself comfortable with that or do you prefer to think in terms of um, seeing money itself as a commons and redefining and redesigning it as a commons or, or even trying to create tools like the time bank you just mentioned mm -hmm. um, to sustain what we consider to be commons or that, that should be commonized? What do you think? What is your opinion? I, th I think that all these solutions are um, important and they all have appropriate they all can meet different needs in different ways. So I think we need a diversity mm -hmm. of approaches, but we need to figure out... That I think one of the issues is the problem, is that people tend to uh, find a solution and they fetishize that solution and they regard that solution as actually being uh, the elixir of life. And unfortunately, th there aren't any silver bullets. Uh, and, and you cannot build um, a house with just a hammer. You need a whole toolbox. And so I think we need to think about the convivial uh, democratic money toolbox, which actually has different tools for different purposes, like, mm -hmm. like building a house. Well, we're building a new economy. We're building commonwealth. And so we have to respect each other's expertise. We have to work on ways to collaborate intelligently, because in a sense, the problem is the prisoner's dilemma, that we are all trapped and imprisoned. And the only way out is for us all to 
cooperate. And only it's, it's, a, it's game theory, really, in that sense. Mm -hmm. And through horizontal and vertical and uh, communica uh, communication and cooperation, we can work out the Rubik's Cube. We can actually figure out a way of getting out of the trap. Because we're all going to either hang together and work it through, or we'll hang separately, and we will really go down. Mm -hmm. And this is a problem in that sense, I think, we are our own worst enemies because we don't walk the top of, of cooperation. Small businesses are much better, in my experience, at cooperation than civil society organizations, who realize that they, 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 they deserve something. They're, well, what have you done to deserve it? You know, if you create virtuous activity, investment will follow the virtuous activity. But you, you know, and that's why the third sector in some ways is the, is the bottom sector because it needs to develop co co creative collaboration and cooperation. I, I see uh, <coughs> uh, a deeper question in, in, in our small group this morning, actually, is the, the deeper uh, uh, alternative social relationships within the uh, presumptions of energy materials for uh, social reproductivity or mm -hmm. reproductions. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, in Bali, Bali is now in deep crisis in terms of water, you know, the lab space and all that. And uh, over the past 30 years, all the waters for the subak system uh, uh, decreased uh, approximately two thirds of it. And, and the, in the uh, particular uh, sub provincial districts that got more than 90% of all money over the past 30 years, the crisis is the deepest. So the idea actually is not just uh, a question of either or, money or not, but, but there should be uh, uh, different understandings, but we live in a co coexistence with the, with, with the, with the current uh, system, monetary systems, and you see it's going up all the way to the uh, way we, we do accounting and all that up to the UN. And so uh, uh, there, there, uh, the, by the monetizing, actually, we have something like a space mm -hmm. for maneuvers, actually, to uh, something like a breaking mechanism, if I may, you know, mm -hmm. uh, for the chiefly, uh, 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 you know, the destructive uh, processes of uh, circulation, money circulations, and 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 so I, I'd like to learn from you know all these mm -hmm. gorgeous people here how to do it. I like the idea of the toolbox. Um, I mm -hmm. tend to talk about an ecology of currencies that we need each appropriate mechanism for the niche that it fills. So mm -hmm. in the caring sector, time often is the critical mm -hmm. element of mm -hmm. care because it takes time. There's mm -hmm. nothing around mm -hmm. um, care that doesn't take time. In, in the food sector, a food-based currency might work really well. Mm -hmm. In the commercial sector, the commercial barter system like they have in Switzerland works really well. Mm -hmm. It's not a multiplicity of currencies that make it unmanageable, but there certainly could be a set mm -hmm. of exchange mechanisms and stores of value that are separate from the monetary mm -hmm. system, which will be there really whether mm -hmm. we like it or not. Mm -hmm. These are designed to coexist with it and to mitigate its harmful impacts. And with that ecology yeah. of currencies, I think we could start to see a more robust social and natural world. One of the, one of the, prob one of the problems is uh, that, uh, on that point, is that um, the banks are very sophisticated in actually their system. Um, they developed a system called Visa International as a cooperative for 12,000 banks in, in the 1950s mm -hmm. because they share one platform to provide credit cards. Mm -hmm. but we have a system where still we have all these complementary currencies evolving since the, the crisis of the unemployment of the 80s. Mm -hmm. And we still don't have a common platform to plug and play. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the administration costs can be shared. And then you can e grow the system because you, you have an infrastructure that is common wealth, which is supporting, as you say, a whole toolbox. This is this is this is this is this is why the banks are on top and we're on the bottom, because they cooperate better in many ways than we do. I'm sorry to say that, but that is so true. We we compete. When we talk cooperation, we actually practice much more competition. I think a bigger mm. danger is that we try to copy their models of being yeah. competitive and strong. And I would like to reflect mm. on what you said. I think caring is not just the mm. business of a sector. I think we should define work in such a way that our capacity for caring for the future generations is not destroyed by it. 
whether mm. it is in productive or in social or in care work, doesn't mm. matter. So I would like to bring that caring mm. capacity back into definition of work in general and not just into a sector that will True. then care for things that are destroyed elsewhere. Okay. I mean, mm. that's not what we what we want to uh, go to. And also reflecting on demonetizing or I, I'm not sure about. I don't. I don't think I have an answer. I don't even know if there is an answer because I think, like Eleanor Ostrom has says, it's also a learning process how you how you govern mm. your commons and you can implement something which after a while starts to lead its own life and has mm. externalities which you haven't and then you you correct it and you you take something else out of your toolbox. Mm. What I know right now is that a lot of the the caring work, the self work, the social work is done. Un, un monetar monetarized mm -hmm. for the moment. The, the thing that is monetarized is productive work because everything, you know, you have to produce money after a while. Money becomes mm -hmm. its own aim for production. We're not saying we're, we're mm -hmm. creating more well-being or more houses. We just mm -hmm. measure gross mm -hmm. uh, national product or uh, in terms of money, whatever is produced with it. So a lot of work of the more commoner work is already done, mon non-monetized. Mm -hmm. And so for the, for the moment, it doesn't help these people at all to be valorized or to be recognized, mm -hmm. etc. So maybe in the short term, it might be good to sort of like recognize that and valorize that and say, hey, what you do is worth something for the community. And we can mm -hmm. make a piece of paper that shows that. And you can show your neighbors or put it on your wall or whatever. Can I, can I that's a good question. Uh, I would ask you a last question which points in the very same direction. If you, um, you have been here at the conference for two days now and is there anything you have learned uh, which you take away from here, take home and which, um, which fosters your, your next steps, which somehow helps you to take a new decision to do something differently than before. Did you have that experience? Just try to imagine one thing and yeah. Try to keep can, it short can, in one sentence. Can I start? I one think, sentence. Yeah, okay. I, uh, this is a really uh, a collection of vibrant uh, experiences and thoughts uh, on uh, how to, um, you know, uh, return to the uh, logic of reproductions vis-à-vis uh, -vis the logic of accumulations. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I think that's really crucial. Uh, to, to understand that the now what's going on is actually something like I would call it topological mixing between the logic of change from monetary values, like asking your son, uh, are you getting healthier $25,000 now? I mean, something like that. So it's the, the impossible is now sort of uh, the, the fallacy is, is get us. I mean, and so I learned so much from experiences, real experiences from all sorts of you know, it's multi-scalar and, and so uh, I learned so much and, and we'll, we'll bring this and share this with, with uh, friends uh, back home. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I've learned a lot about the commons. I didn't know a lot about that particular train of thought and way of being before I got here. And I think going back home and finding ways to make the commons more meaningful for my community so that we understand ourselves as managing the commons of Montpelier, Vermont, which is where I work, I think would be really useful. I, I, I've, I, I was struck, I was, I was delighted to be invited to the conference and I was just struck by the diversity of, of, of expertise in so many different areas and the uniqueness about the conference for me, was people who are working in different fields coming together to cover a huge collection of basic needs and, and, and create a cultural needs. You know, it's 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 been very impressive. So that it's opened my mind and horizons enormously. I think what I take home, I I found it a privilege to be invited here. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I don't think there was like one specific insight that I have learned now. Uh, I think I've learned a lot of new questions, but what I mainly take home is this enormous enthusiasm and energy to, to continue working on it, knowing that you're not alone and that there's a whole community of other commoners around mm -hmm. the world going for the same goal. So we are connected, I think.